everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood. We're here at SEMA 2012. And you guys have probably been watching a build that we've been following throughout the year. Um, Kevin Tate's Jaded Mustang project. We were really excited about it. And like probably every car here, we came down to the last hour. And the paint's back basically wet on a lot of these cars. And, you know, we're working on this just minutes until before the show. Minutes until the show, and uh, I had the help of some unbelievably, not only great friends, but great technicians. Guys, I have to acknowledge, uh, Brian Finch, Hot Rod Transformations, Tim Strange, Strange Motion, and Search and Restore TV. Uh, people kicked in, uh, Jesse and Jeff Greening, Media Blasted the Car. Uh, people kicked in because they're not only they're my friends, but they believe in, in what we're doing here. Bringing a car to SEMA, man, it's on a bucket list. It's an unbelievable honor to have it out here. The Heat Shield Products guys for hosting the car, Pilot Transport for getting it out of here. So uh, I'm done plugging, but I just want to say thanks to all of those guys. Last, but certainly not least, is my good friend TC Panic from Bay One Customs in Springfield, Tennessee. Uh, TC literally shut his shop down because he believed in the project. We're tight friends. I've had him as a guest on the Trucks TV show, and, uh, and he's one of these renaissance men that whatever you throw at him, he said, yeah, I can do that. And he can, he follows through. So, you know, kudos to this guy. This car, you know, everybody wants to know, you know the history. What made you pick this car? I know, you had, you know you've been working on it for a little while. What, what's the history on it? Well, the history is, uh, I'm, you know, I make no bones about it. I'm a Ford guy. I love Mustangs and, you know, but I don't hate any make. I don't hate any model. However, Mustang means something special to me. And the people were asking me, what's the significance of this car? Years and years ago, I bet I was three years old. I remember my dad, who's also a paint and body guy, um, and I got you know a lot of the foundation from just watching him and handing him tools. But he had this '65 Mustang coupe, and it was a, a V8 three-speed standard shift car. And I have this this deep-seated memory of the sound of that car leaving the driveway. Now, whatever you know, you get your Freudian analyst that say, "What what does that mean?" You know, I don't know. We can install all kind of stuff, but it's a Mustang. It sounded cool, and and the shape of that, the shape of this car, is stuck way back here. So I have this love for Mustangs that I've always had, and muscle cars as well. What makes this car different than all the other Mustangs that are here? I know you did a lot of, you guys did a lot of custom work on this. That just, you know, you're not going to see on any other Mustang that's sitting in another booth. Well, yeah, the, and as this project progressed, it, it just snowballed, and it just seemed like it got more and more and more work. And there, towards the end, we were doing extreme custom work, just as as fast as you could do it to, to finish this project. It was a very, very fun, and I appreciate Kevin letting me do it. And uh, he brought me to SEMA in Vegas for the first time. And, I enjoyed working with the Eastwood products. It was just an outstanding project. And we got a huge response for this uh, Tunnel Ram Gray. Oh my god. A gosh. phenomenal product. Yeah. That's that's cool, yeah. Now now going into that, you used a ton of um, Eastwood products from start to finish, you know, on auto body wise. Now there was there any tools that you used otherwise? No, brake line layering tool. tool. Oh my gosh. Yes, I, I've been uh, playing brakes for twenty years, the old style. But the new uh, double flare tool that y'all sell, best product I've ever used. Well, it, we had to make a couple of transition lines. There's a, a, an axle arch on this car. Now, it's not a unibody anymore. It's a full-frame chassis. We'll get into that later. But at some point in having the body on and off of this thing a hundred times, one of the brake lines got, actually two of the brake lines got compressed, the front cross-member section as well as the rear cross-member section. So at the last minute, we're trying to bleed the brakes. They won't take a bleed. So we look at the lines and they're pinched. So in seven minutes, we, was all the time we had, we had to flare up another brake line transition. So uh, out comes the tool out of the box, and then seven minutes later, Viola, we had our, you know, yeah. and, you know, we're both sitting there at the bench vice, and he said, you know, we're looking at it going, well, this looks really easy. And we went, okay, I pulled the lever, we clocked it over, found the number and the color, pulled the lever again, and we went back to work. Yeah. Beautiful. That, that's awesome, and it was just one try. No, no, you know, like with the old style where you know it might take three tries to get one to seal. No, it was packing peanuts on the deck of right. the bench vice. That's how out of the box it was, and it worked perfectly the first time. That, that's awesome. I'm glad you got to use some other some other stuff other than just the auto body stuff that you're normally using. Now back to the custom work. Can you go over a little bit of the you know the custom things on this that makes it stand out a little more? The the vision I had for this car. In the first place, it had to look mean. It had to go fast, stop, and steer. So those three things are, are about uh, components and, and quality components melding together. But the vision of the car that I wanted is something that, that utilized the idea and the, and the, the deep-seated, uh, it's like a subliminal thing that we have for these old cars. The silhouette of this car speaks to people, and it does me, and I know it does. It's an early Mustang. It's the first Mustang. They made three 
few million of this body style. It was an amazing car. I've done a lot of research and history on these cars and, and why it resonated so deep with the public. So I love Mustang, and Mustang has retained its character, especially in the last couple of years, where they brought styling cues in back from the 60s in the early cars into the late model cars. And, and it's, it's because they know that this silhouette and shape taps into people's psyche. So getting back is, is I wanted to integrate modern componentry, modern styling cues that are based off retro styling cues into a classic car and make it subtle enough and make it uh, proportional enough to where it blends in. And you never forget it's a 66 Mustang coupe, but you also notice that it's got 2005 headlights. And, and it's got a flush mount late model style windshield with a six millimeter gap that is, you know, you, you look on a car lot, that's how the glass is installed. Uh, I wanted to pull door handles. I love pull door handles. There's lots of cool techniques and tricks for flush mounting door handles and, and, and uh, plating them in and stuff like that. I love that custom work. I wanted the tangible door handle that I could push the button because it says to me, 60s muscle bar, it says to me, Mustang. So the, the blending to me of the modern cues and the, the early idea of a Mustang, um, I think I think we hit a home run with it. I think we really had success. And judging by the reaction of people coming by, it's been incredibly flattering to have people say, wow, that's a cool car. And here at SEMA, you've got the best of the best. And it's so, like I said, it makes the hair stand up on my arms that this car is being received so well. So I think we hit a home run on the styling. Now, getting back to function, we've got things like a bare brake package. 14 inch rotors and six piston calipers on all four corners. You stomp on the brake and you're going to go through the windshield. It's going to stop us. We also integrated the uh, Hydroboost system from the 2004 Cobra, which is the donor for the engine, transmission, and uh, the gear ratio. It's a 9 inch axle, it's not an 8.8. But the Hydroboost is, is part of that with the rack and pinion steering. So now, well, look in there. I've got four and a half inches. There's no room for a vacuum booster. Right. Under the dash, there's no room for a vacuum booster, so necessity breeds, uh, you know, invention. Right. And Hydro Boost solved the problem, and it also integrates a modern concept in making this car functional as well as really stylish. That's awesome. So you should, you should really, you know, be able to drive this thing. You know, it'll feel like a new Mustang when you're yeah. driving this thing around. Yeah. And obviously, with a little bit of additional performance in it, because it's you know probably a bit lighter than the uh, than the donor car. We think it's going to weigh about 3,200 pounds. Uh, the the 04 Mustang that it came out of is closer to about 3,800 pounds, uh, fully dressed. So we've shaved off 600 pounds of weight. This engine, rated from Ford, in that Cobra, is rated about 395 horse, about 413 foot-pounds of torque. You uncork it a little bit, and the power comes up exponentially. What we've done is we've got four precision uh, fuel rails, 60-pound injectors. The blower, the Eaton blower, has been ported. It's a stage five port job by Posi Performance. We've got a, a single-blade inlet throttle body, an air meter that's custom mapped for the internals of the engine. This platform is capable of sustaining a thousand horsepower all day long with your foot in it at seven gram. The forged internals of this uh, Romeo block is legendary. That's why I chose that platform. It's a, a stock T56 transmission, uh, and it was more than capable of, of hooking that, that uh, 04 Cobra up, and it was 600 pounds less. We're, we've got a good solid drivetrain. Wow, so that thing's gonna, it's gonna really move in a, I mean, it looks great, but it's still gonna surprise some people on the street, I think. We're thinking, uh, according to, uh, to my, my guys that help design and the whole package, it's about 650 horsepower to crank. So we're looking at about five and a half of the wheels, I think. And uh, traction is gonna be the next problem.